Hello chaps and chapets and welcome to a very late out of the bed because you didn't get much sleep edition of the double back monthly for May 2017. Woohoo! What is the double back monthly you ask? Well, it's a video where I look back at everything that I've done board game related in the month of May, which means that this video will probably be very short due to the fact that I've been very occupied with the new player in the house. Player number four has entered the game. Um, and so we've had to build a new bedroom and we've had to decorate that new bedroom and we've had to do lots of other things, but I get beside the point here. What is this video? This video is where I will talk to you about uh, games that I've reviewed in the month of May. I'll also do a section on um, first impressions of games that I played for the first time, or maybe the last time. Um, and then I'll have a question time uh, little bit where I'll talk to you a bit about the UK Game Expo because I've been away there working at the expo. And then I'll finish off with a prize draw to win uh, a digital copy of my CD called Night Last or Last Night. Yes, this is a special draw that I do for all those Patreon backers that I have. And if you want to be a Patreon backer, there's a little link which will pop up now and you can go there and check out all the little promos that I give away as, as like compensation for your support towards this video and the show and the videos that I do and my channel. Yes. So let's talk about the games that I reviewed. Well, I've only reviewed this one and it's a Kickstarter game as well uh, called Clash of Rage. Yay! I can read and you can read too with me. I'm gonna get some bouncy caption balls and stuff like that maybe later. Uh, Clash of Rage um, is a kind of area control combat game where players will be playing non-generic races against a generic race called the Elves. And you're gonna be fighting to get back your territory and to gain control of cities uh, and to, to build legendary weapons which will help your troops uh, combat the elves and maybe the other players at the same time to get more and more victory points. Um, it's a very relatively fast playing combat game um, with nice interesting mechanics which involves your different types of troops um, and their special powers and the, the armors and weapons that you equip them um, and it plays pretty quickly and there's going to be a campaign mode where there'll be a new rule introduced to make the game a little bit different a little bit harder and uh, finally you'll be fighting off a very big bad boss of an elf together or maybe not together hmm that was clash of rage my score at the moment is somewhere around about 8.5 as this is a Kickstarter prototype um, and it, uh, there's no minis involved, but it is quite an enjoyable game. Obviously it will expand greatly with uh, some new rules and some new different things and some different races and some different heroes and, and some different map tiles as well. So uh, look out for that. Also, what have we done this week? month we did a Berkey and badger board game babble show yes we did it was called as seen on tv where we talk about licenses and games with licenses are they good thing are they a bad thing are they a money grab or are they really a great investment for for people that are fans of a tv show or a, a series of books or, or whatever so um yeah you can click on the uh the thing that's gonna pop up and go and check out Berkey and badger there and of course, you can find all of this stuff on my site, boardgameseverybodyshould.com. So now I'm going to talk to you about games that I've played for the very first time. Um, and maybe for the last time, because maybe they weren't that good and I probably don't want to play it again. Let's talk about this game, which I played for the first time, called Spoils of War from Arcane Wonders. This was sent to me by my good friend Berkey, um, who does the po podcast with me. And there's a nice picture of him in the middle there. Isn't that sweet? Ooh. Yeah, so Spoils of War, what is it? Well, it's a bluffing game where basically you're all Vikings, you've come back from a big war, and you've collected a load of treasure, and now you're trying to divide it up. And uh, you're doing this in a betting game. 
you'll each have some dice and you'll be rolling these dice and keeping them secret. And then you'll be betting whether you there's gonna be like six nines, there's no nines in a dice. But you, you'll be betting if there'll be like say threes, fours at the table. Or maybe someone will go, there's five fours at the table. Or maybe someone will go, there's eight fours at the table. Or would someone will go, there's five fives at the table. And you'll be betting. And then when someone thinks that it's not possible, they will call uh, their bluff. And then you'll start, every player will bet on um, who they think is right and who they think is wrong. And you may get your chance to win some treasure is if you actually are correct along with the the bluffer or the person that's calling the bluff um it's very light it's got special powers on some of the treasures and you're doing set collection you're trying to either get lots of different weapons or you're trying to get a, a collection of each thing so a weapon an armor um, a, a special item but as i said there's some special powers on some of the artifacts which will allow you to change the value of dice or to steal something from someone else and um, it all comes down to how much money and treasure everything is worth at the end of the game it was really enjoyable um, it's very much like sheriff of nottingham although sheriff of nottingham um, it's there's not really much to go on on this it feels that like there's a little bit more to go on because it is dice and you know what dice you have in front of you um, it plays relatively quick you're playing about an hour um, and it only plays up to five players but if you buy two copies you can actually play up to ten players which means lots of carnage um, quite enjoyable I, I'm looking forward to playing this one again uh, with a different group maybe with some family um, and that is Spoils of War now it's a game that I, I haven't played for the first time but I have played for the first time as a solo and that is Outlive and also I've played first time as a finished product because this was a Kickstarter that I did last year for the Bois de Joux. Um, and in this game it's post-apocalyptic where you have some teams of people out scavenging the world trying to collect bits and resources for your survivors and you're trying to get as many survivors as you possibly can is also trying to uh, acute, find weapons and artifacts and, and tools and things and to create them and to repair them and that will give you points as well as building your big underground shelter um, played it solo for a change um, and it works pretty much the same as it does when you're playing multiple players um, there's a deck of cards which you'll be drawing one and it'll be telling where the the opponent's teams are going and they will probably cause trouble for you or maybe not there's not so much trouble in this one because it's random with a deck um, when you're playing against other players there's always someone that's going to try to be nasty to you and put their team of five on your team of three and therefore cause a little bit of conflict and maybe steal some of your stuff um, the game is still outlive it works the same it feels the same even though you're playing solo um and it was it, really enjoyable i really like this i want to play it again with more people I want, well more than one person um yeah i wouldn't mind playing this again with two and three and four players i'm actually going to play this game quite a lot as soon as things start simmering down here and maybe teach the wife when she's got her normal brain back after all that trouble that she's had um so that's outlive really good game really nice presentation on this thing as well the minis the little components there they're very little still but uh they're, they're good they look like bullets and they look like me mm. okay last but not least this big this is game it's big box day this is yeah dark souls which is another Kickstarter. Now I've played this twice, I've played it solo, and I've played it with a group of friends, I've played a three player game. And it is a game which is based on an IP, there you go, we'll tie that back in, which is Dark Souls the video game, which is meant to be a really, really tough, kind of challenging game where you have to learn your enemy's moves and adapt to them. Um, we've played this and we found it quite interesting it's got some nice new mechanics um, programmable enemies because it's cooperative and you're going to be trying to figure out the best way to go around it now the game is pretty hard because all the enemies will attack you first when you go into a room and then one of you one of the heroes will attack and move 
however you wish. And then all the enemies will attack everyone again, and then another player will activate, and then all the enemies will attack. So it is quite hard, and you have to puzzle it out and think, okay, what is the best strategy? Where's the best place to move? Where is the best place to attack? Who is the weakest one for each character that you have? And um, once you've cleared a room, you'll collect some souls, which you can either go back to your bonfire and spend to buy upgrades, upgrade your character, or um, build uh, build new weapons. Or you can continue and try to keep, you know, pushing your luck into the next room. Maybe the monsters are a bit more tougher, or maybe you won't have the luck of the dice on your side to help you get some more souls. And then all the souls that you've saved will go into that room, and you'll have to go back and go and collect them. Um, yeah, it is quite challenging. We played up to the mini boss. We didn't play to the actual final boss, and it was we picked. We were lucky. We picked a, um, a very light mini boss, and we were able to defeat him quite easily. Um, it was really kind of really a nice brain puzzle team cooperative game. It, again, you're not just teaming it as uh, who you're going to attack and what you do, but you're also teaming it when you're deciding what the, the enemies are going to do because there are rules for them um, to do certain things and you will be telling them to either do this or that and maybe it's best if that, that, that enemy goes closer to that player. Hmm. Um, the rule book was a little bit of a convoluted load of stuff with things you couldn't find when you needed to ask a question against the game but the components are really nice again i love the dashboard that each player has and putting your cubes in holes so they don't move so you know exactly how many life points you have and what skill level you are um i'm looking forward to playing this definitely again this is definitely a, a replayer i don't know how replayable it's going to be after you've played it a couple of times and beaten the boss because it is just a case of the same thing over and over again. But um, we'll see. For the moment, I, I, I'd be quite content to play this a few more times and then see how bored I get of it. So let's talk about the NEC. No, let's not talk about the NEC. Let's talk about the UK Gaming Expo, which takes place in the NEC in Birmingham where uh, it is the largest UK, which is United Kingdom, which is England, which is Angleterre. Um, it's the largest gaming event in that country, yes. And uh, it takes place, it took place on the 2nd and the, to the 4th of June at the NEC in Birmingham. I'll go around in circles. Let's go around in circles some more, shall we? I went there not as a spectator, so I didn't get to play anything really, apart from in the hotel at the end of the day. But I was actually working there at the Monolith booth, demoing the the new Batman game. And hence, I'm I'm doing my research by reading some Batman comics. Yes. <laughs> um, as an outsider, this is my like my first time actually behind the scenes of a convention like this. It kind of felt like a, a mini kind of, what's the word, Essen, that's the word. Why couldn't I think of it? It was a mini Essen where there were lots of booths. There was some playing area set aside for players, but um, it was mainly people giving out their new products and demoing their new games. Lots of lots of companies from all over the world. There were companies from America. There was Gil Hover from Formal Ferret. He'd flown all the way over and spent some days in, in London. And he went to Paris as well, which is somewhere down the road for me. Um, and then there was uh, Czech Games were there and Paul Grogan and managed to rub shoulders with him a little bit. And time is short when you're actually working at a convention like this. It's incredible. The days seem to go by so really fast. Um, set up, setting up for the day was quite easy. Um, you just find your, your home and then you, you put your tables and chairs up and you put your game on it and away you go. The event went past really, really, really quickly and that's because I had a lot of fun demoing the game. Now it was only a prototype of Batman that I was demoing, but um, the amount of interest that we had from people was incredible. The tables were full all time. We were running two games uh, at all times and it was just fun upon fun. There were 
a certain amount of players that had played Conan, which is another monolith game, which is this is system is based on. But uh, there were a lot of players that hadn't played Conan and wanted to play Conan, but actually were more fans of Batman. And they were they were very happy to play, and they would play the whole game. Um, and everyone walked away saying, "Yes, this is a Kickstarter that I want to back now." That is promotional, but that is also the truth of the matter. It was a case of everyone enjoyed it. And again, kids were lining up to play this game as well. Kids as young as seven. There was one kid of seven years old who played as Batman and um, around five, just before the end of the game, he managed to take out Bane and destroy all the explosives um, in a super heroic move. It's incredible. I don't know if his dad was actually teaching. No, his dad was actually playing Bane. So it wasn't his dad that was actually telling him what to do. So um, the game, as I said, the demos went really, really well. Everyone was giving us some positive feedback. We did some interviews, we did some bits and pieces. Um, and at the end of it, after all it has been said and done, the packing away was fun, quick, light. The service there at the UK Expo, if you've never been to the Expo before and you've never demoed there, or you never worked there, or never had a booth there, they are very, very friendly people. They're a very friendly team of people that would help you out to the ends of the earth to make sure that everything that you have is to your satisfaction and that is great i had i had lots of problems but um the guys that were actually working there were able to help out and unfortunately i couldn't do anything more to, for them apart from sing their praises so uh well done team uk gaming expo you did a really good job as a first timer there um really really great and if i saw you there then hi again uh, honorable, honorable mentions, Luke Hector was, uh, he turned up one early morning to play Batman and uh, yeah, Luke Hector the squirrel, I will call him from now on as he nibbled nuts while playing the game at 10 a.m. in the morning. Wow. Uh, also Dan Hughes, hello Dan, you're a tall guy, you're taller than what you look on camera. Um, you're maybe taller than what? everybody even the green giant probably maybe but anywho yeah nice to meet you guys if i did see you there and you did play the game thanks for playing hope you enjoyed it um and i think it's time for us to move on to the prize draw Yes, it's the hat, and so you know it's the prize draw. Yes, this is for everyone that's backed at the $5 or higher level of my Patreon will have their name put into this hat and will win a, a digital copy of my soundtrack last night, which is my first soundtrack, but not my last, because the next one's coming out pretty soon, and it's for a game called The Seventh Continent. <laughs> yes. Okay, so, uh, yeah, if you've backed, your name is in this hat. If you want to back, go and check out my Patreon. Um, hmm, key. Go and check out my Patreon. At Board Games Everybody Should. Or go to my boardgameseverybodyshould.com site and uh, find a link there. Or just watch my stuff there. You know, you can, you can do that. Let's have a seat. Drum roll. Let's see who has one for this big enormous piece of paper. It is Olivier P. Well done, congratulations. I will send you a copy of last night in the post. And again, all of those of you who are actually uh, backed at a pledge level, which gave you a promo of some sort, I will send them in the post this week. Sorry for the delay, but you are gonna get your stuff um, and you'll get a little message telling you that the stuff is on the way. Okay, so all that remains for me to say is ciao for now. Sorry for the lateness, but things will start rolling out pretty soon. Uh, reviews will start coming as we start to adapt our lives around player number four. And things are starting to come down. Calm down. Come down. Don't bring me down. So thanks for watching, chaps. I'll say ciao for now and see you soon. Just sitting at the table next to Felicia with me. Yeah.